transforming procurement choosing the smart path by mr ruchir shrivastava director procurement key commodities and services at vedanta limited so good afternoon everyone i am here as one of the manufacturers and i will probably although this uh, conference is on supply chain and logistics i will probably take a step back and also give you a view of what exactly does a manufacturer or a consumer look at so i will probably take a holistic view one helicopter view which encompasses everything right from procurement to logistics to supply chain to warehousing and please please feel free to stop me and ask i will i will be just very uh, is this on is this okay so i'll try and take a very high level view but then uh, happy to deep dive wherever you want so let me first give you a perspective on commercial function commercial i mean everything right from uh, the planning to purchase to supply chain to everything so are we the kings or the king makers generally procurement people like to think of themselves as kings we can talk to our suppliers we can command them we can reject proposals we can come to i mean bring people to terms but essentially for an organization commercial is a king maker you are really the enabler which is enabling your company to function properly and that is where your strength lies now a commercial function is generally a punching bag i mean koi saman nahi aata hai to log bolte hai ji procurement ne khareed ke nahi diya ya supply chain ne time se la ke nahi diya ya delivery nahi hui profit center aap ho nahi aap cost center ho company mein jo revenue leke aata hai wo to profit center hai but aap to cost center ho everybody has a view point sabji baji sabne khareedi hoti hai har bande ke paas ek view point hota hai ji mehanga khareed liya acche se nahi khareeda aapko to inventory zyada ho gayi फिर अर्जेंसीज होती हैं हाफ द टाइम यू आर फाइटिंग फायर फाइटिंग कि आपके प्लांट में कुछ कम है कुछ मटेरियल है नहीं आप उसके लिए मटेरियल लेने भाग रहे हो देन यू हैव टू बी ट्रांसपेरेंट सारे ऑडिट्स हैं सारे एस आपको मीट करने हैं सो इज प्रोक्योरमेंट फंक्शन अ वैल्यू क्रिएशन फंक्शन और अ डिस्ट्रक्शन फंक्शन आई मीन दैट्स दैट्स एसेंशियल टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज as commercial function or procurement function we think that we are very i mean top of the world kind of things log aa rahe hain apne brochures de rahe hain log apna presentations procurement material leke aa rahe hain but basically if done properly within time and budget if you are enabling your uh, production you are a value creation function hence the need to transform the need to transform is not without technology so you have to transform technologically this gives you speed this gives you efficiency this gives you transparency now an interesting question i mean since morning we've been deliberating on how to automate how to what to do with the technology but what essentially is technology so if you see technology is anything which is a piece of software or hardware which enables you to perform better and that includes your emails your whatsapps your basics to rpas and ais and mls and everything now the interesting question here is human intelligence or artificial intelligence everybody is talking these days about chat gpt and stuff like that as an organization if i were to take a decision to let us say disband the procurement organization or the supply chain or remove people from that can that be done do i choose automation or do i choose my people so let us deliberate for a minute on a chat gpt what exactly is that according to a mckinsey study it says generative artificial intelligence is some, something which can create new content which can give you audio video images a lot of that now is it useful is it good is it bad it depends right 
and i will just give you a small example right after this on how good or bad it can be depending upon what questions are framed what is it that we ask for it to do how much data it is trained on how much questions are asked to it how much exposure does it have to the uh, scenarios which we are trying to control so this is a clipping from new york times only uh, a week back and most of us know that the us i mean the there was a big hue and cry because the a photo came in and the markets crashed that was just because some generative ai generated some uh, photograph wherein a key building was supposed to be in uh, a crisis and you can see how the markets crashed so i mean we are now living in a world wherein ai can create wonders but it can also create destructive uh, value for the organizations and the market as a whole so then what to do so there has to be caution and experience which needs to go into what exactly is being asked for you need to design the solutions in a manner wherein you have these solutions with experience models needs to be tested they need to be worked and reworked till you feel the comfortable with it and you feel that it is workable it is delivering value for your company and most importantly you need to use common sense along with the technology i mean when the that photo surfaced the markets immediately crashed but somebody used common sense and figured out that that photo was a deep fake somebody realized that that photo was not really what it was depicted to be so somebody used common sense and got the technology together now <laughs> a quote from bill gates which is my personal favorite it says if you put automation to efficiency it will increase your efficiency if you put it to inefficiencies it will magnify your inefficiencies as well so it it is imperative that the technology which we put is suited and is is made with a very very uh, logical mind so my industry procurement in mining is really a little different from what we do in a regular space it is based on technicalities absolute technicalities nothing else so basically anything which has to do with mining industry has to be very very technical because it goes into such manufacturing facilities which can't really handle anything which is out of spec it has to be as per requirement it has to be systematic it has to be in compliance so that is exactly where there are a lot of use cases which we have made and i am specifically uh, focusing on something which is related to supply chain and warehousing first thing first is buying automation second is auto payments i mean nobody would like to deal with a business which does not give you payments on time so timely payments is something which can be automated and it is a very very i mean it's a need of the hour i will also take you through something which we did with tms auto truck management in our industry we also have automated driverless trains not in india but in australia some of our competitors are running driverless trains so buying automation yes we have automated all the uh, i mean all the 80 20 rule we know about it anything which does not really add much value can be automated so when we analyzed we figured out that a lot of almost 80% of our value was tail spent procurement so we automated that gave it to a partner who was uh, who was really that was his bread and butter so we saved a lot of cycle time we saved a lot of time on the warehousing costs and also the gross working capital and we achieved something called as faceless and touchless buying process so this is required because small value you can't really have a lot of people intensive kind of a work auto grs and payments which i was talking about anything which is coming to our warehouses are tagged with rfids they are taken up internally scanned and put it up in the warehouses and uh, racks there's no one to really uh, put it in manual registers or see whether that uh, material is 
uh, noted somewhere manually. Everything is automated. When we issue purchase orders, we issue the barcodes along with it. So when the supplier brings it back to our stores, they stick that uh, barcode and our system automatically knows what is coming and who for it is needed for. Integrated truck management system is something which we are really proud of and we have done it around four or five years back. It's been running wonderfully well. What we did was, in addition to the regular uh, tracking and uh, tracing, what we did was we went to NPCI and asked them for their uh, readable source code of these fast tags, which are available on every truck. And that data was synced with our system so that we don't have to manually register each truck, put their details in. Now anything and everything is uh, right through that fast tag which is already available and which is stuck on all every truck by the uh, banks. So as soon as the truck enters, my RFID tag reads it and then the entire process of, I mean, right from the parking to automated way bridges to automated yards to automated uh, billings, invoicing, everything is automated. That has saved us around 77% of manpower. I mean, we don't really have people on the way bridges now. We don't really have people on the yards now. There's no one. So these are some of the items which I thought I should bring to your notice. I was keeping it short because I would like to discuss it now with your, uh, I mean, any queries which you have. But essentially, procurement or the uh, supply chain function is an enabler to any company. And technology is an enabler to the supply chain function. So essentially, if you judiciously use the technology, we can work wonders together. So that's basically what I wanted to say. Open to questions. I hope I'm in time. Yes, please. done into a logistics and yeah. since you are from procurement background mm. and I'm also uh, from Nayara Energy so wanted to check how like one is that to increase the agile and that time how we can quickly close the RFX process right we can float the RFP get the quotation do the e-bidding negotiation or the close the smooth contracts yeah. so are there uh, any automation done on this handling the RFP and post PO collaboration I mean how the supplier can go acknowledge yeah. the PO and then give the dispatch delivery and then payments and all. So is there any automation done in this area? Absolutely wonderful question. We do have a lot of automation right from the uh, time the purchase order or the uh, PR requirement is placed. That is created in SAP and it flows through a process called as uh, automated buying process in the uh, software which we have as Ariba. So that process right from the RFQ flotation to reverse auctions to comparative statement making, approval taking, everything happens within that Ariba system and everything is tracked. There are automated dashboards which are floated every day around, every week, every month and we track everything which is uh, due to be tracked. So there, there's no lethargy somewhere. Also, we have given logins to our buyer, uh, suppliers so that they can log in and punch their uh, invoices right when the uh, truck leaves their uh, facility. So as soon as the truck uh, is uh, pushed out of their facility, my system has their invoice already. Also through that TMS system which we talked about, my system knows when the truck arrives. And according to the payment terms, it is pre-scheduled and we have a centralized uh, payment processing system which is delinked from our plants. It is sitting somewhere in a remote area which directly does it uh, as soon as the uh, truck arrives. So that is how automated payments are achieved. So I hope I answered yeah, your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we have one more question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Piyu. I have one question. That, yes. Uh, what are the uh, technology advantage or how do we uh, leverage technology? I'm sorry, not able to hear you, please. How do we leverage technology in terms of uh, sustainability and ESG kind of uh, topics? That's again a very, very good question and as a responsible company, we also have taken a lot of targets about the ESG and carbon footprint. So uh, right from the first thing which we talked about the uh, transport management, that was implemented around four or five years back. Until that time, these uh, carbon footprints and all that was not the talk of the town. 
but we did it on our own because we wanted the things to be smooth. We don't want trucks to be stranded in our facilities for a long time. People don't know when the trucks will go in, when it will come out. So that was automated right at the first. And now in our uh, algorithms, we have built in uh, algorithms which can calculate the distance from where the material is coming in and the carbon footprint it is likely to have, whether it has a uh, plastic packaging or disposable or reusable packaging. I mean, all those stuffs are inbuilt and we are continuing to develop those kinds of algorithms in our system so that we can plan and purchase in a manner which is much more uh, easier on the environment. Thank Hello? You. <coughs> sir, have I have one question? query. Can we have a mic please over here? Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Uh, I have one question. Yes. Uh, in, in this uh, full automation process, yes. how do how the quality aspect is checked? Check uh, because there is no see the machines cannot do the quality checking, no. and if there is any kind of deviation from the desired quality or shortage of material or anything, True. can you so highlight? That's that's again a very good question. What we have done at our end is we have uh, put in a very very stringent and a thorough supplier registration process wherein we register only those people who we trust. And once they are business partners, we don't call them as vendors, we call them as business partners. As soon as they are registered as business partners, we trust them. And we trust them with all our lives. So we trust whatever has been ordered for is received. right? And we periodically randomly audit. Once we audit our stores and if we find that something is not right, then penalties are up to blacklisting and recoveries and all that. So people don't generally try and cheat. So that is the mechanism which we have tried to build. We, we pay on time, but we expect people to bring the material which is as per the quantities and qualities. Uh, but this thing cannot be applied <coughs> to other... Uh other uh, means segments or other uh, no, industries. Trust, it can be. Ah, this mean, is possible in uh, in the case of your mining industry where the the, indo the vendors are few, yeah. and you can rely upon them and based on their earlier credential or historical reports and all that thing. So that other way, industries, I mean, trust is the name of the game. If you if you trust people, then probably you can put in stringent check mechanisms. But then, uh, if you trust them, it, it's much more easier for everyone to supply. I mean, you have your supplier ratings, you have your uh, audits in place, and then uh, you can probably automate parts of uh, these systems. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Hi. Yes, please. Hi. Uh, actually, I wanted to understand about... Not audible, please. <coughs> I wanted to understand about uh, the, as you mentioned, ki the whole buying process is uh, automated. Yeah. So, just wanted to understand if, uh, whether, how much it is mature one, and, or be, since when you started, and how you difficulties you faced that is one thing and uh, how much it time took to you know get it uh, streamlined or something like because i think mining industry is a core industry and it uh, it is uh, previously maybe yeah. 10 years back it was an un unorganized one and something like yeah. that so how it come through so as vedanta we buy at least uh, 12 billion dollars plus of material every year right and if we put a Pareto rule to it, we find that the commodities which are bought consist of most of that spend base, but the transactions are limited in number, right? 80% of the transactions which happen are really small value items which are either standardized or in, in a manner which is available freely in the market. So we've done two things. First thing is we've put in auto MRO systems wherein system reorder system uh, checks the stock level system, uh, checks the reissue orders, uh, reissue levels, and they uh, issue the orders directly to the impaneled suppliers with uh, uh, auto RFQ and auto uh, quote generation. Once that quote is submitted by vendors in the system, uh, system automatically creates and tabulates a comparative statement and uh, issues the order to the L1. That is one way of doing it. Second is we have also figured out certain partners who have their own warehouses, who have a purchasing and buying capability. And we have outsourced a lot of material quotes to them. They buy it for us, they uh, store it for us, and supply it just in time. So as soon as a requirement arises, they, they have visibility and they have access to our SAP systems, wherein they can see our uh, re reorder patterns, our requirements, and everything. And as soon as they uh, find that something is short on order, they order and keep it for themselves. And then they supply when uh, the time is right. 
Uh, hi, Richard. Yes. Uh, nice presentation. Thank I was you. actually glued into the slide when you started that procurement, you know, comes as a punching bag. <laughs> I had marketing for the company, so we are one of those, you know, who throw a couple of punches to the procurement. Yeah. Now, my question to you is, procurement has got various internal clients yeah. within the company. All functions becomes your client. True. And you also mentioned, you know, whether it's human intelligence or artificial intelligence, yeah. what do we go? So, as a function, we expect some, you know, level of domain uh, understanding. Nitty specifications to the procurement team. So where do you see the balance coming of human intelligence and the machines to help? Yeah. Where you have so many functions to cater to, different yeah. requirements of, you know, let's say from IT, from marketing, True. from so, so many functions. True. So that's a really nice uh, thing to see. I mean, see, it, it is basically what you wish to achieve. If you see it as a cost center and if you want to standardize, it will help you in many ways. I mean, more ways than one. So basically, first thing is standardize your SOP, standardize your buying process, standardize your uh, items purchased. Don't venture into some things which are not really standard or which are, uh, I mean, don't reinvent the wheel as if it is not necessary. That is number one. Second is, I mean, even if you want to automate, there has to be human intelligence which is in the system so that you can pick out outliers, you can pick out if the system is going somewhere wrong and re-evaluate or recalibrate the entire system. So that is a work in progress. Industry is grappling with in, uh, the entire uh, AI and all that. But with judicious use, you can really work wonders. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions, ladies and gentlemen? So I'm available after this. I mean, if, even if you have your question, we can have a chat separately. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Ruchir, for giving us such a wonderful session, requesting you to please be on stage for the felicitation. And now I would like to call upon Mr. Rajesh Shah, Executive Director at WeTrans, to please be on the stage and felicitate Mr. Ruchir Srivastava. Can we have a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, please? everyone.